In a previous video, we made some of our Christmas lights rechargeable, and one of the viewers suggested why not make them solar powered as well. Now I made the obvious joke of creating an infinite energy machine, with the lights powering the solar cell, which then power the lights, which then power the solar cell. You get the idea, eventually it would explode. But it got me thinking, is it even possible in the Scottish winter to run the lights off solar power? Now, contrary to popular belief, it is actually quite sunny in Scotland. The only problem is, being quite far north, our winter days are pretty short. You can see this from the calculator here. Edinburgh is around 56 degrees north, so around this time of year the sun rises about 9am and sets about 3pm. But you can see that during the summer it's rising at about 3.30am and setting at about 8pm. We do get really long days in the summer, but in winter, pretty short. Using this next calculator we can work out what the best tilt for our panel is. The sun is so low that we need to be almost pointing at the horizon for maximum power. Reading off the graph, we should get around 2 kilowatt hours per meter square. So I thought it was worth a go, and ordered some small solar panels off Amazon. Using the 2 kilowatt hour per meter square value, with the size of our little cells, we'll have around 4.55 watt hours of sunshine. Our panels should be around 20% efficient, so we'll get 0.91 watt hours. In theory, assuming we get 5 volts from our solar panel, the maximum we'll be able to get is around 200 milliamp hours. Now I have to say, this feels very optimistic and pretty unlikely. But let's run some experiments and see. I have hacked up the code for my DIY battery discharge tester, so it just monitors voltage. It's based around the ESP32, which is quite handy as it's a wireless device, so I can stick it outside on the balcony and pull readings off it remotely. I really don't want to be standing outside, because it is pretty cold. This should give us fairly optimal conditions as the balcony faces south, and there's not much in the way. Rather than measuring the open circuit voltage of the solar panel, I thought it might be more realistic to measure it under load, so I'm feeding it into a voltage divider made up of two 220 ohm resistors. This will give us about 10 milliamps when the solar panel is outputting 5 volts. We do need the voltage divider as the ESP32 is a 3.3 volt device, so we need to get our voltage into that range. I've left the panel on our south facing balcony and recorded the output of the solar panel. At this point I'd just like to say thanks to PCBWay for powering the YouTube channel over the past couple of years. There probably wouldn't be a channel without them and there certainly wouldn't be any PCBs for projects. Check out a link to them in the description. They do a really good job. The results look kind of promising. Even with our weak sunshine and shadows from the trees and the occasional cloud, there are periods where we might actually get enough voltage and current to charge a lithium cell. We might at least be able to harvest enough power to run some LED light strings for a couple of hours at low brightness. Calculating the current based off this voltage and our fixed resistors, and integrating the area under the curve, I think we managed to get about 33 milliamp hours. It's not much, but it's better than nothing. I've got one of these TP4056 charging boards, and I've removed the charge indicator LEDs so that we don't waste any power. Hopefully this board won't have the same issue that one of my other boards had, where it was draining the battery when it wasn't charging. Check out the video that should be in the top corner right now if you're interested in that investigation. It was pretty fun. I've also taken one of my salvaged lithium cells and discharged it completely. We'll hook this up to the charger board and leave it in the window for a day. Unfortunately, after making all these great claims about Scotland being sunny, the weather forecast for the next few days was pretty dire. Even measuring the open circuit of one of the cells gives us a pretty bad result. This won't charge anything. But with two cells in series, we get a reasonable voltage, and adding another two in parallel means that we might actually be able to get some power. After a day on the windowsill, we've got some results. There was no sun at all, but we have managed to raise the voltage of the cell by a very tiny amount but it is a very tiny amount. So I've discharged the battery again, this time I've tried to get it to exactly 3 volts, and we've got a pretty reasonable day forecast. I'm trying it with just a single cell, and we're getting quite a good voltage even with it under load connected to the charger. It's quite a nice day, so hopefully we'll get some good results and some sunshine. Well, the sun is pretty much down, and looking at the voltage coming from the cell, we might as well call this experiment done. We managed to raise the voltage by a whopping 0.2 volts over the day, which is definitely better than last time, 
but according to my battery discharge test, we only managed to get a measly 10 milliamp hours into the battery. Not a great result at all, but probably about right given that the solar cell is on the windowsill indoors and the weather has been a bit worse than normal. Not a great deal of sun really. So I think maybe we could double this on a good day and get 20 milliamp hours. So I'm going to call this borderline possible. We could definitely run our LED string at a lower current and on a good day get a couple of hours of runtime. All in all a pretty interesting experiment, but I think for now I'll stick to charging my lights via USB. Thanks for watching, I'm going to take a break now for Christmas and I'll see you all in the new year.